to be a preferred home for veterans and reservists. Mate, the job. You asked me to apply for a job. What is the job? At BA Systems, we are committed to supporting the work-life balance for all our employees and embrace a range of modern working practices aimed to enhance flexibility for individuals whilst also enabling business performance. The f***ing job, mate! Welcome back to Fast Performance there. My name is Tim Davies and today we are back in the attack shack dropping truth bombs on your personal battlefields helping you to win the wars you are fighting and maybe we need to give the Royal Air Force a little bit of help because very soon unless they sort their flying training system out they're not going to have a front line with which to win wars. It's already suffering. Deborah Haynes brought out an article. Let's share this with you. She works for Sky News. Now, Deborah dropped it like it's hot as they say uh, last Saturday where she cites a document that's been leaked out from the Royal Air Force, I've got the document actually, and the guy that sent it to me uh, was not in the service. And I said to him, where do you get it from? And he said, a senior source. What that means is the source has to be someone above a squadron leader level, all right? It's not a student that sent this out. And the Royal Air Force is saying it is students that sent this out. I'll show you another article in a minute. Um, and uh, I think it's gaslighting what's happened here, but I don't really know what gaslighting is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Google that as well. Um, I think what's happening is the seniors are saying we're losing confidence in our students. The whole thing is pathetic. It really is. Look, an emerging problem with training aircraft and a damaging drain of flying instructors quitting for jobs in industry has helped push the Royal Air Force fast jet pilot training into crisis. Leaked documents reveal it's been in crisis since 2008. I've talked about this at length on YouTube. I've talked about it on Instagram, uh, Twitter. I've talked about it. And I've also talked about it here on the YouTube's fam. You know what I mean? I've talked about it. We'll go through that in a second. The problem is you've got young people with the whole lives ahead of them that have put lots of work into getting qualifications and getting into the service. The Royal Air Force then brings them into the service and then it keeps them on hold for years at a time. Can you imagine that? So you're going through this flying training and you can fail at any time, any time at all. You can fail. And now they're stagnated in the service. Now the meme generators out there have gone wild with this. And we'll have a look at some of those memes, memes. I never know what that means. We'll have a look at some of those later on. But looking at this then, it's pretty damning, isn't it? There's delays and students can't get through flying training. It was the same when I was in. You know, I've been talking about this forever. Um, basically, oh, look at that. It's so grave. It's considering asking up to 30 of its recruits to quit voluntarily. Say no if you're getting paid the big money. Sit in there, go around the Air Force, do other jobs, but stay in the flying training system if that's really what you want to do. That's Dr. F. Chase P's medical advice to any student in the flying training world. Okay, that's just what it is. Um, reputational risk if air chiefs took up there's reputational risk anyway there's no risk anymore with the reputation of the Royal Air Force when it comes to flying training I don't want to swear on my own channel but you and I know it's messed up it's messed up and I know it's not the Air Force's fault necessarily because United Kingdom military flying training system back in the early 2000s the reason that it was privatized under a PFI kind of like a PFI it might be the PPP but it's pretty similar the reason it was privatized back then was in effect to make the money that was going to the, um, the money that the Treasury had to give the Royal Air Force every year for flying training was very volatile. It was different every year. One year, the Air Force would ask for 60 million pounds because it had to build some buildings. And then the next year it would ask for you know 1.2 billion because it had to buy a whole new fleet of training aircraft. So it can never be predicted. And so what happened is the Treasury said, well, how can we make this predictable? Let's do a PFI. We'll put it out of industry. Lockheed and Babcock Defense Services, I believe it was, came together, made a sent flight training. Um, and then basically they knew nothing about flying training, of course. They won the PFI. I think something like 3.2 billion was given over to them. And that meant that the Treasury for the next 25 years, from about 2008 onwards, I think it's 2008 to 2033, I'll do the maths on that. That sounds about right. Was given flying training about 250 million pounds a year to function. Okay, function. Now, the problem is, why this isn't necessarily a sense fault, it was a sense fault initially, but then it's kind of moved over to the services fault because the Royal Air Force bought 28 Hawk T2s that I flew, but Dumala here only bought 26 engines years, and it should have bought something like 30 engines because you need spares or 31 or just an increased capacity, and it didn't. So whenever I was flying this jet, we never had more than about 14 on the line. That was the best we could hope for. A lot of the time, we'd have maybe 8 to 10, sometimes much less. And now my wife was up at Valley two days ago, still with a crib up there, and she said she saw one jet flying over the last two days. It's that bad. It's that bad. If you're not getting guys and girls through this school here, they're not going onto this jet. No one's going to this jet. There's a tornado. It's out of service now uh, with the Germans still flying. We're not. But they're not going onto the F-35. They're not going onto Typhoon. Now, the problem is, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. 
Flying training and the front line need each other in, in many different ways. When a student comes through flying training, they do other aircraft first, the Grob 120TP, then they do the Texan T6, which is also at Valley. There's a point, I'll come on to that in a minute. Then they go through the Hawk T2, then they go on to F-35 or Typhoon, all right? Now, the problem is those guys are then become frontline guys. But who trains those frontline guys? Well, it's other frontline guys that have come back into the flying training system here, onto this, okay, so, and onto the other aircraft. So the front line, once the student's done their front line tour, we need to grab that ex-student, now front line dude or dudette, bring them back and train them up as an instructor on this. Now, the problem is they're not trained to be an instructor. To, to be an instructor takes about nine months of training. And it was myself and my, my guys, they were all guys, 12 guys. They were the top instructors and they train the instructors. So they trained, my instructors trained the other instructors how to instruct the students. That makes sense. So. You've got those instructors that were training the other instructors how to train students. Now, if you don't train instructors, because my guys were instructors that also train the students and they were already trained. So if you stop training the instructors, stop teaching the instructors, that means you've got to teach the students. Same amount of people have to teach the students. And now you've got these instructors stuck in limbo, not the students. You've got instructors that can't teach. So the instructors are sitting there. I was speaking to one dude. He's been there for about a year, I think it is. He's halfway through his instructor training. Ridiculous. You've got to train your instructors. You've got to prioritize instructor training. The end, the end is almost comedy because what happens is a boss is output driven. So a boss, he wants the front line saying, AOC one group saying, give me AOC, Air Officer Commanding one group, all the front line stuff. He's saying, give me students for the Typhoon and F-35. I need students, I need students. So these guys are like, director of flying training, get students out. All right, I'm the boss here, I'll get students out. Yeah, but then you're not training your instructors. So now you haven't got enough instructors to train the students. Does that make sense? And then the whole thing falls apart. We, it happened to us back in 2012, 2013. I managed to get some people up from the Royal Air Force Center of Aviation Medicine. They did an audit for us and they shut us all down. Let's go back to the article, shall we? They shut us down. So I'd get my instructors trained. I did, I got all my instructors trained. It didn't take six months then. I thought it would. It took about four and a half because my, my guys were like just on it, 100% on it, teaching the whole time. And then basically we were able then to get all the students through and it was awesome prioritize instructors anyway the whole thing's dead because the engines are dead apparently the hawk out in australia had the problem with the odor 871 engine with the compressor blades cracking the u.s navy with the t-45 hawks got the same problem strange enough now the 951 on this is also getting the problem incidentally that is the engine that aerialists have picked which i told them don't do it but they did they've got this engine that they're going to run in their system their, their jet as well and they've signed a memorandum of understanding with um ascent flight training ascent flight training i've signed it so whatever let's go and share the screen then so here we are back in the article let's go so emergency problems emergency problems with the rolls royce engines tick happy uh students have been holding every stage of training for about a year right now it's taking seven and a half years to get a student through fast jet flying training the, i think the united states air force do it in about two two and a half um, yeah, we've got commitments overseas. That takes pilots over to other places. Look at that. Despite having 43 slots at the front line, only 11 trainee pilots are scheduled to be through the conversion course of FJT to learn how to fly. F I mean, yeah, biggest F up in the Royal Air Force. Oh, well, it was. I mean, it is now, but it was back in 2011. We knew about this. Yeah, but he wants to stay anonymous or she. Look at that. God, six to eight year process. Should take two or three years. It's a scandal. It is a scandal. Um, so the other thing as well is you've got instructors that would be coming back from the front line. So front line guys and girls are said to become instructors, but now they're being used on the front line. They can't be spared. So because there's no flex in the system, because flex costs money and the actual system, it wasn't really designed to have that. It was designed to be super lean and efficient, but flying training is anything but super lean and efficient. Things go on. The weather changes, jets break, marriages fall apart. That's it. So waiting times, yeah, I don't even want to go into the rest of this. It's a mess. And and Deborah has kicked, kicked them apart. Fair play to her, though. So I dropped that on the, the face two book things, whatever that's called. Let's see if we can go and have a look at the face book things, the, the face thing, the face books. You know what I mean? So I shared on the, the face book tubes. This is the latest one. Is that the one? Oh, yeah, yeah that is the one. Yeah. Oh, I sent, I sent this. So I saved this back in the, this is uh so this wasn't on saturday this was a way back this one look at that august the 5th so that's going back in the day what day is it today yeah okay probably was had a look at that 
some of the comments, yeah, rightly so. Well, we knew this was happening. Um, yeah, but they've all got diversity flags. I mean, they've, they've, they've closed recruitment for pilots now. So all these young people that wanted to get in, they've closed it. And this is because Mike Weston, who was my boss on this airplane here, is wrapped up in DNI right now. We all know that. He's wrapped up. It's his bag. DNI doesn't help you win wars. It doesn't. Diversity is not necessarily positive, especially in a meritocratic hierarchical structure such as the Royal Air Force. That's my school. Um, yeah, so when you start going, all women crew lead RF fly pass over Wembley. So here, if we're going to cover diversity very briefly before we look at the other article Deborah put out and then some of the other things I've been talking about, you're trying to be diverse and you're trying to be inclusive. Tell me how, tell me how you're being inclusive where you are not letting men in that cockpit. What would happen if it was the other way around, by the way? All men cockpit for World Cup, men's World Cup finals. Would you have a problem with that? Yes, you would. Now, there's a good quote here, actually, from one of the guys who I normally joust with, but he's a good dude. And he basically said, here we go. The bottom line is you can't treat discrimination through the use of discrimination. It doesn't make sense. If you want equality, then the systems in place must consider everyone equal. If you want the very best, you must consider everybody and only pick the very best, regardless of their appearance. I can't even. He's absolutely right. I can't even believe it. What we're basically saying here, diversity, inclusivity in the Royal Air Force. We had the we had the email, didn't we, where they said, um, preferably not white men. We know what diversity means. Diversity means not white guys, please. That's all right. No white men. OK, that's what it means. That's all right. White guys are building sheds and doing other stuff anyway. It doesn't really matter. It is so hot in here. It's 32 degrees. This is ridiculous. Luckily, I've got tea. I was about to say, I don't know how England conquered the rest of the world. But I do now because we had tea. Couldn't have done it without tea. Truth, fam. Truth. Right. So let's scroll up a little bit, shall we? So are we scrolling up or down? Oh, we'll go down, won't we? Right. So that's diversity there. So we've been wrapped up in diversity. David uh, Hill. David has just written a book. I'm just going to pump this for him a little bit because I like David. He's a good dude. I count him as a personal friend. Never met him, of course. David Hill. A noble anger. The manslaughter of Corporal John Bayliss. Okay. Again, the Ministry of Defence gets off scot-free. It actually says on the back here, manslaughter is generous. The impact on the breed is no less than that of murder. Now, all the proceeds of David's book goes to St. Richard's Hospice, Worcester. One ninety nine. this book costs. It's ridiculous. Read Red 5 first. That's about Sean Cunningham's death. And then read this one. It, they, that Ray Red 5 goes into this one. I'm not here to hit the red arrows. They're in an absolute state right now. Toxic culture within the team. But they're protected. If I start talking negatively about the red arrows... A lot of bad things happen in my life, and I'm not going to do that because uh, I have family and everything else. The red arrows are protected. Ministry of Defence is protected. I'll be audited and everything else. So I'll just have I'll just get ridiculous. Let's skip over that. It's my school, lad, lad, lad. Come and fly with me, all right? I'll teach you. Oh, beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah, the enforcement of standards. That would be useful, wouldn't it? That's one of the problems I've got here, and we're going to talk about virtue signaling in the Royal Air Force. This is a good guy. I like this guy, Morgan. He's basically said, no, you can't be fat if you're in the army. It's ridiculous. How have we got to this stage where we put women on the front of magazines and we say uh, fat is healthy or fat is no, get rid of it. Carol Vorderman, that's who they sent to the premier in the end. You should have sent the white dude or the black pilot. Sorry, the black pilot. You should have just sent someone because Carol Vorderman went and that's the advert for the Royal Air Force. In front of a Royal Air Force typhoon, that's what you're. That's that's it. Come and join. Look what you can be, women. You've just got to just got to get your chest out if you want to be in the Royal Air Force. It's ridiculous. And here's another one. There are four women now, and my family's all women, so don't come at me with a whole kind of misogyny stuff. It's not about that at all. I'm just saying. Okay, this is about the virtue signaling, not the misogyny. Equality should be equality. With that fly pass you saw, it should have been a mixed cockpit. And when when they said this is over the women's final, by the way, women's football final at Wembley, when someone, as they would, because people do this. When someone says, "Why did you send? Uh, why didn't you send a woman-only crew?" The Royal Air Force could have turned around and said, "Because we believe in equality." I think I'm the only person in the world that thinks like this, but it didn't, did it? It said all women, and basically it said, "No, we're, we're definitely we want inclusion, just not with men. We're sending women." And everyone's like, "I think it was justified, Tim, because it was over women's final. If that's justified, then it's justified for men to fly over men's final." And I don't even want to get in for that. Just mix it up and just be equal. It could have just said, no, we believe in equality. So it's a mixed cockpit. We don't play the, the politics. But we know, of course, that the Air Force does play the politics harder than any other service. The diversity politics, the woke Wigston, that's what it is. We know that. It's, it's, it's wokeism, isn't it? These these ladies here, I assume they are ladies. I'm sorry if I'm misgendering them. You never know now. Let's talk about the probability of this being possible without prejudice to men in the promotion stakes. 
Right, in the Navy. All four training establishments now have a woman in command of them. Now, how unusual is that? If you can do the probability on this, whack it down in the comments. I'm interested in your working because I don't know how to do this because I'm not the cleverest cat in the world when it comes to numbers. But there's 250 captains in the Royal Navy, of which 20 of them are women. 8%. I did that maths. But the probability then that all four or a fifth of those women, a fifth of the women, all end up in the training establishments and none of the men do. What's the probability of that? Probably zero or 0. 0.0000%, 1%, 2%, whatever it might be. All right. Unless there's some social gender engineering going on. Oh, so hot in here. Yeah. So Mike's in until 2023. Well, he may not be because there's another news article that's come out. OMG. Yeah, that's right. You're going to audit your mother Hubbard. That's what they're going to do. You're going to audit you. You're in trouble now. Okay. So what you're saying is basically we're going to audit the military flying training. Oh, and the funny thing about this. <laughs> They're going to go into this one now. We're going into this one because this is comedy value extreme. Ben Wallace is our defence secretary in the UK. Um, okay, so there was a, it was a, an official sensitive document. I think it was a wrap up of some command meeting that was released, and it talked about how many typhoon pilots were, were weren't able to fly at low level or at night or cleared to tank or anything like this. And the figures were were pretty bad. Like, yeah, you don't want that. Um, you don't need that. That's bad. To be in that state right now on these squadrons, I was shocked. To be, I'm not shocked by much because I'm like, I know how this stuff works. I was shocked by this. I'm like, how have you got yourself in a state like this? That, that is really bad, guys. It's really bad. And then the problem is you've got the military flying training, which is also really bad right now. You can have one end that's not doing great as long as the other end is feeding in pilots. Or you can have flying training not doing that well as long as we've got a really, really good front line. But right now in the Royal Air Force, you have neither. Both are really bad. So basically, once the internal inspection, uh, it's a neutral one, apparently. It's not going to be from the people here. So look at that. More, more, more than half the pool of trainee pilots were in limbo as of May. Um, holding for a slot on a flying training course, taking a refresher. That's why they've shut entries. They're not really doing anything productive. Now, they do send them off to squadrons to do admin roles and everything else, but these people, and also the young people, and they get older, and then they start families. In fact, let's hear him talk about this. Okay, listen to this bit. It's, I think, about 40 seconds long, all right? Listen to what he says about the chief air staff. This is the important bit, okay, what he says about Mike Winston. What do you want to do? What are your ambitions? And what are your priorities? So uh, between all the three services... They all have their own priorities, but I have priorities. And it's really clear what my priorities are going to be. I've sent each chief, chief of the general staff, the first sea lord, chief of the air staff, a single priority. Not five priorities, not the usual word I'm going to hide behind. Say, that's what you are going to. When you're guided to how you spend your budget, that's what you've got to do. So the three of them are very clear. The first one to the first sea lord is get what you've got working. You know, if I go back to the treasury and ask for more ships or more submarines... They might laugh me out the building if they say, you've got these Type 45s, it's been well publicised, we have engine problems with three or four of them. So before you want something new, what, let's get it fixed. Because the more that are fixed and ready and better readiness, the more I can deploy them, the more we can use them for foreign policy or for defence purposes. I've said to the Chief of the General Staff, your priority is to recruit. Don't ask me for new armoured vehicles if you've got no one to go in the back of them. Right? Because otherwise... What's the point? Um, and I said to the chief of the air staff, there's a very well publicized through the National Audit Office failure in the processing and training of our fighter pilots. We've got a, a glut of about 250 who are halfway through. Instead of taking two or three years to train, it's been taking up to seven. Well, by that stage, half of them say, well, I'm off to fly for Ryanair or, you know, I've got children, thank you very much, and I'm not doing any longer. So if you get those fixed, we'll get more productive, more out of it. So... <sighs> pretty clear and that was from that was from uh december 2019 so now we're looking at 18 and a bit months later i mean it's not like you weren't warned I, I do think this is pretty shocking to be fair so let's finish then i mean there's some classic things in this article here one of the things that gets me look this is this is classic so leadership and tailspin over leaks anyway well the thing about leaks is an interesting one if you don't do anything stupid no one else is going to leak it, are they? That's what I always say. But you do stuff that's stupid. You don't listen to anyone, including me. You don't listen to me now. You didn't listen to me, listen to me when I was in. And people just leak it out. Look at this, though. Uh, the author of the official sounding note said they suspected Air Chief Marshal Wigson, the rest of the senior RF leadership, 
All right, tell, tell us a bit about this. This is someone obviously that's written to, to Deborah. They will feel let down and disappointed, the note said. They will now be less likely to view the student's cohort predicamently favor uh, favorably too. With you in their position, the military is all about trust. If you betray that knowingly by leaking reams of official information, it's not exactly a small slip up in a personal post on social media, then you can expect that betrayal will have consequences. <laughs> that's just gas. It's like, that's the gaslighting, isn't it? Saying it's not our fault, all this, it's the student's fault for leaking it. Dick lords. Absolute dicks. It's, that is awful, isn't it? That that's because you that's a cognitive distance. That's a cognitive distance thing. That is that's like it's not our fault. It's pe pe people leaking stuff. That's what's causing the failure of our flying training system. We're convinced ourselves of that. Anyway, so that's ridiculous. The rest of it's ridiculous. Yeah, fine. You're going to get done and nothing's going to happen. You can't change it. You haven't got the flex in the system. We all know that. It's a broken system. It was before. That was that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Let's look then just briefly, shall we, if we can, at um, some memes memes and then we'll go okay then so i've got some memes and things we'll go through here now this i just put this one up really because it's quite funny it was for a flight sim job at uh, valley someone asked me to apply for i no i don't want to do that thanks but i know the guys there, they're really good guys actually when i left the service though um they did ask me to apply for the f-35 and the typhoon sim job but they also said to me ba systems we can't do anything with your application for six months because if you look at the very front of our web page it does say that we're actively looking for women and bame and I said, we don't know any women in BAME that can that can do the job for you. They went, yes, we've got to wait six months though, for them to apply. So I had no money. I had to start a business. It's called Shadowlands Online Flying Training Fighter Pilot School. Come and trot fly with me by all means. That's my business now. So, and then when I was sent this advert, the BA Systems, I did click on it. And it says here, the job description for the SIM job at Valley. The, the job description, what have I got to do? Well, it says here, we serve and protect those who serve and protect us. Basically, it talks about want the best talent, want everyone. And look, and successfully, and security for valuing diversity and inclusion. Mate, what's the job again? We care about difference in all forms and want to create an inclusive environment. You've yeah, got it, mate. Inclusive, diverse. Uh, yeah, got it. You said inclusive twice, by the way. What's the job again? So that people can be, where everyone can be themselves and reach their full potential. Still trying to work out what the job is, mate. We welcome candidates from all backgrounds and particularly from sections of the community who are currently underrepresented within the industry. Mate, I'm happy with that. Yeah, what's the, what's the job again you want me to? Including women, people from ethnic minorities, people with disabilities and LGBTQ plus individuals. We, we also want to be a preferred home for veterans and reservists. Mate, the job. You asked me to apply for a job. What is the job? At BA Systems, we are committed to supporting the work-life balance for all our employees and embrace a range of modern working practices which aim to enhance flexibility for individuals whilst also enabling business performance. The f***ing job, mate! What's the job? Flexibility provision vary by role by role, but include hybrid working. Didn't apply, did I? Didn't know what the job was. Uh, a friend of mine, Air Commodore Joe, second on the left here, uh, Joe Lincoln, she posted a picture up here. It was without context, and Joe made a mistake. I'm not having a go at her, honestly. I'm not. It's just there's a, it's a danger to post these kind of things up, all right? Because guys like me launch on it because you're deleting the white man. No white man there, and 86 percent of your workforce is the white man. Um, remind me why I love being in the Royal Air Force because I work with such an incredible team of great people. Now, apparently, that's the senior engagement team. I heard so. That's these are all the rainbow colors that you've got there. Um, there's probably a wheelchair knocking about there somewhere. But when I complained to Joe, come on, Joe. She said, oh, no, there is a picture with a white man in it. She decided to post the one without. And then I had an argument on the phone with her for an hour. I had to say to her, stop talking over me, Joe. This is fundamentally wrong. This is an inclusive organization which only accepts applications from women. I'll stop you there, OK? I'll stop you there. Here's a virtue singing post for you. Here, look at this. The old side from the main entrance, Dora Fontaine, being removed. It didn't feel very next gen or inclusive. This is what's wrong. Pilots don't want to fly in a service which is going all out of its way to be diverse and inclusive. It's, there is a, it's a meritocratic hierarchical structure that rewards effort and competence. <sighs> well done, give yourself a tick. This is Lauren, I trained Lauren on the big jet. We had a chopper, she went to fly bigger jets in fact. Uh, and um, yeah, I can't be bothered with that. Let's look at the memes. This is Magic Mike. His thing is Astra, but look, Sky News beating him up. Project Astra, the big thing. Persistent systematic failures that have led to the general environment of dissatisfaction and low morale hitting RAF pers. Yeah, he's not popular. Sky News, RAF response. Nothing. They can't do it. Their PR is shocking. Their social media is shocking. Me, we have enough pilots to meet our commitment statement, which came out the first time. We have enough pilots. Deborah Haynes, no, you don't. It's true. You don't. You may have in the instance, but you know that's not sustainable. You know it's not sustainable because people leave and then... P 
people try and come in, but they're stuck in training. People leave, go to Saudi Arabia. Someone sent me a list of who, who those guys in Saudi flying for BA systems are at the moment. And it was all the guys I used to work with, including two of the bosses of that squadron are out there as well. If the boss goes out there, follow him. Bosses know what they're doing. I'll stop you there. Yeah, the front training pipeline is dead. AOC 22 group, Air Office, this is the guy that runs flying training. Deborah's article there, making him feel sad. Deleted post from the uh, Royal Air Force, which I put back up on mine there. And mine, I'm famous. Yay. Uh, obviously, what I said about the deleted post. I'll go find the deleted post in a second, actually. It's quite interesting. Basically, it's kind of admitting to all this. The sacrifice I'm making, guys. It's hotter than a tiger up here. Not a Siberian tiger, because that would be cold. Don't worry about the deleting social media posts. Yes, they've actually got to the stage. I took a screenshot. They say, our people are our greatest asset. Bollocks. We all know that's true. They're not your greatest asset. And we're committed to ensuring we attract and retrain the best, the brightest talent to meet current and future threats. You're not. You just want to drag in ethnic minorities and women at the moment. That's what you want to drag in. I know that because I know young men, white men, who are applying at exactly the same time as the guys on their air squadron who happen to be ethnic minorities and the women. And these guys, are, some of these guys are ahead of them even, and the, the minorities are getting applications uh, looked at and interviews ahead of the, the white guys. So you are discriminating white guys if you discriminate anyone you've already shown where you're discriminating white guys on that fly pass thing didn't i you can't pretend you're not discriminating if you discriminate against white people you discriminate against anyone um because you can't it doesn't matter what color i don't care my school does not have a diversity inclusivity policy by the way it has zero i've never seen a single face of anyone i've trained most of the guys i don't know their real names it's in patreon but i don't know or look you know what i mean there could be i have people from all over the world um, and I fly with them and I don't know what, what race they are and or I haven't even asked the gender. Some sound like women, some sound like men. Um, here we go. Whilst we acknowledge there are challenges with the training pipeline, we are working across the fence with industry and our international partners to improve the training experience and results for our personnel, including recruiting more instructors and actively managing timeframes for training. We continue to have sufficient air crew to meet our operational commitments. Bollocks, you, you know that's not true. And I'm done with it now. I can't bother hitting the Air Force because they're just basically lying. Um, at this point, I didn't even share that, did I? I'll put that up. I didn't share that, guys. Sorry about that. All right, guys, look, I'm, I'm super hot. I'm going to have to go and stand in front of a fan or something. You know what I mean? I hope that's all right. Uh, I'll just sort of give you a bit of an understanding of what's going on with these um, these news stories that are coming out. This is ridiculous. It's got to be more than 30. My wife's got this thing with her house, right? When it's really hot outside, it's really cool inside. She thinks I open windows to cool the house down. I'm like, no, I've got a degree in thermodynamics. It doesn't work like that, none. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't work like that. What happens is the whole world of hot air out there is a little bit bigger than the small cold air in the house. And then she says, I'm mansplaining and shit, and the whole thing goes weird. Okay. I'll go live in the, in the spare room for the next week. Guys, really appreciate it. I'm going to win this now. Uh, Tim Davies, fast shit performance. <laughs>